Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Morphling. So Morphling is probably one of the hardest carry heroes in the game, and he's a hero that a lot of players like to use when they smurf and they want to like boost accounts or whatever, because he's just so hard to deal with. The big thing about Morphling is he takes basically a team to counter him. He does have very specific counters, like the best one being Ancient Apparition, because Ancient Apparition's ult doesn't allow him to morph, um, uses ability that basically trades strength and agility to gain more health. But really, the hero is all about just abusing the fact that it's really, really hard to trade with this hero. Um, I'll show you in a bit, obviously, once we get to the abilities, but this hero has, like, almost infinite regen in a way. Like, even on level 1, 2, 3, this hero is very, very hard to trade with in lane, and if you aren't, like, just dealing with him as a team, you buy the right items, you have the right heroes to counter him, and you're really just forcing him to morph into all of his strength so he has no damage early on into the fight, it's going to be very, very hard to deal with this hero. And then, you know, as usually happens in most pubs, in lower MMRs, if this hero gets to that five, six items, you know, even four item timing where he has so much items, he's super tanky. He almost doesn't even need to morph into strength anymore and he can do insane amounts of damage. It's very, very hard to deal with him unless you have like, you know, Chrono or something like that or Chrono Cataclysm, like very specific hard counters that are going to be able to deal with him or you have very, very good team coordination. So that's why he's very good at uh, smurfing, uh, stomping pubs, all that kind of stuff. Um, basically, he's an agility carry that just kind of is very good at right-clicking, has mobility, does a little bit of everything. You can kind of do everything with this hero, especially because Morphling being in his name, his ultimate allows him to change into every single hero. So he's basically like the Rubik um, of carry heroes. So Rubik is a support, sits in the back, steals spells. Uh, Rubik can steal ultimates, where Morphling can't steal ultimates, he only steals normal spells, but he can change into somebody, steal spells, and then if he gets an Ags, he can steal stats as well. So he just becomes very, very powerful, and he's actually one of the best carry heroes right now when I'm making this video. But he, even when he's, like, nerfed, even when he's not that good, he's still one of the best carry heroes. Um, if you're really wanting to learn how to stomp games and play carry, but he's also one of the highest skill cap heroes as well. Like, it's very, very difficult to play this hero. I don't even really play him because I feel like it would just take me so much time to get good at him. Uh, but yeah, he's one of the top skill ceiling heroes, and if you can perfect this hero, you can just stomp games. You could probably play like almost only Morphling and one other carry and get to like Immortal if you really wanted to. So that's Morphling, that's how to think of him in general. Let's jump in and take a look at his abilities. So now that we understand Morphling in general, we can take a look at his abilities and see how he's able to be one of the best carries in the game with also a very, very high skill ceiling. So first we're going to take a look at Waveform. Pretty straightforward and simple spell. You can see the green circle and that's kind of the distance that I can Waveform in. And you basically just press it and then you press the area or the place you want to go and you Waveform so it's a mobility kind of jump spell. But you can see when I go through Axe there, I also do damage. So you're doing damage along the path and you can use that to last hit creeps, to farm in general in the jungle, that kind of stuff or you can use it to initiate, you can also use it to escape, whether it's in lane or later in the game. So this is a mobility spell, it's obviously not super long distance, but it is good enough that you can get over cliffs and all that kind of stuff. Pretty straightforward spell, and you are doing magical damage with that. So it doesn't scale the best, although for now you do have a talent that helps it uh, scale with your attacks a little bit, um, which also helps him just scale as a carry in general, but who knows, you know, at any point talents could change, so just keep that in mind. Next we have Adaptive Strike, and this is actually two abilities. So you can see here, it looks like he has you know, five normal abilities, and he kind of does, but really he still has three, it's just that the next two are divided into two separate abilities that are kind of paired together. So basically he has Adaptive Strike Agility and Adaptive Strike Strength, and basically they kind of do similar things. They are a kind of targeted spell, so I'll press the Agility one on Axe, and you can see a little you know, water thing comes out and does damage to, to Axe. And then if I press the Strength one, it basically hits him, pushes him back, and stuns him. And so that's kind of the difference. Now, if you see, I have free spells on now, but if I use Adaptive Strike Agility, you can see the main one that I used goes on cooldown for longer. And then the Adaptive Strike that I didn't use, I can use kind of again before this one comes off cooldown. So I can kind of use them a bunch here and there. And this damage and this stun is all based on the amount of strength or agility you have. That's why it's called agility or strength. This one's the damage, so the more agility you have, the more damage you're doing. And then this one's called strength. The longer you stun, or you're going to stun longer if you have more strength. And so the way you get more agility and more strength is basically through attribute shift. So these two are the uh, agility and strength attribute shift. So basically if I press D here, 
I'm shifting to agility. You can see the green bar going up. You can see my health going way down. So with no items, I only have 340 HP, but you can see with no items at level 13, I do 150 damage. The reverse is also true, where I can shift all the way to strength. It takes a little bit, you know, it takes some time to get all of that um, agility and strength to switch back and forth. But then I have 22 damage, which is like absolutely nothing, but I have 3k HP. Um, which is a lot. So you can see that this is how this hero can kind of be high skill. You probably can already imagine because you need to be shifting back and forth at various times. Uh, adjust and you, but you can't shift too much because you don't want to just get rid of all your damage just for strength. But then sometimes you know maybe you do need to shift because uh, you need to shift all the way to strength because you just need to get out. You're not even trying to really do anything other than survive. So that's just something to consider. Uh, and then you can also see that it does take some mana. So, like, when I'm shifting down, you know, so my mana's draining a little bit too. So mana burn does hurt this hero. Now, that's something that could be changed because in the past it didn't take any mana, all that kind of stuff. Um, so just keep that in mind. It could change, but right now it does take mana. So that's pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, for now, obviously, I will show you a little bit of a trick there. Um, with attribute shift, but for now we'll just keep it at that and we'll look at morph and morph is pretty straightforward You just click it on an enemy hero you become that hero and then you get all of the the uh, hero's abilities So actually right now axe doesn't have any abilities. <laughs> I didn't level any of them up So right now I don't have any abilities technically um, when I stole him, but yeah normally I could use call I could use ba uh, Battle hunger and I also get counter helix as a passive as well So you get basically everything and you can just switch back and forth kind of as you want it just ended there um, So we'll just refresh this really quick. We'll get free spells so I'll steal him, uh, so I can use Call, I can use Battle Hunger, I can shift back, I can wave for him in, I can go back to Axe, and I can Call again. Obviously, I have free spells, but still, you get the point, you can kind of go back and forth. So it's very important to st uh, to steal, you know, depending on the fight, depending on what heroes are available, you know, maybe you want to steal stuns because you need lockdown, maybe you want to steal... Um, uh, a carry hero because they have really good abilities or something like maybe you want to steal life stealer because he has built-in bkb there's all these considerations that also make this hero very high skill now i will briefly say and again this may get changed into the future but ags is very important because basically what this does is this steals attributes and this is really really good against not only universal heroes because now you're stealing all of their damage and pretty much everything about them which is amazing but you're also now stealing agility from uh, from agility carries, and they basically can't attack. They have less armor. They have less damage. It just makes them way worse overall. So it's a very hard counter to agility carries and a very hard counter to universal heroes. Not as much of a counter to intelligence and strength heroes, so just keep that in mind. But it is still good. Um, it's just that if you know they are all strength or intelligence, it may not be an item that you really want to buy. But these days, you know, there's always going to be an agility carry or a universal hero, it seems, in every single game. So keep that in mind. Now, lastly, I will show you this. Um, let's say I have like 800 HP. Let's get this axe to attack me a bunch. Let's give him, let's give him some items. So he's like actually. Oh, okay. Don't kill me. Okay. So now I have like low health, right? Well, that sucks. So what I want to do is I want to get my health back. So what I do is I shift all the way down. Actually, let's, let's do this again. Let's have axe attack me because I was already so far down. It didn't really, didn't really work. Okay, here we go. This is a better example. So now I have 200 health out of like 1100. That makes sense, kind of where I'm at. Maybe I want to st stick at like 1200 or so. Well, what I do is I shift all the way down, and I have like 1 or 2 HP. But then I can just basically shift right back up to like, you know, 1200. And now I'm like at half HP. Where you saw before, I was at like 200 HP. And I can kind of do the same thing. So I can get half HP uh, from shifting all the way down. So you can use this in lane. So like in lane, this is very, very good because you shift all the way down when they're harassing you. You kind of walk away, make sure you're not going to get hit by a creep or they're not going to hit you when you have one health. And then you kind of shift all, shift back up to half HP, but not all the way. Like you don't want to shift like all the way up like this because then that kind of defeats the purpose. You've, you've used a lot of mana and now you don't have as much damage. But basically you can just do that whenever you get low HP in the jungle or whatever. And it's very, very easy to sustain on this hero. The other thing you can do is obviously, let's say you're farming. Uh, we'll just refresh here. You're farming or something in the lane or even in the jungle at like 800 HP, but then you get take you take some harass. You can just like slowly over time, you know, while you're trading or while you're getting harassed, just press F a little bit and just morph more to strength, and then you're just gaining strength as they're harassing you. You're kind of staying at 50% HP, which is what you'll see a lot of morphlings stay at. They'll stay at almost like 30 to 50% HP a lot of times because they're just kind of like morphing a little bit of strength here and there, here and there, as they're trading, as they're hitting the enemy in the lane or what have you, uh, or even in fights a little bit, they'll just morph a little bit at a time, and then once, you know, the harassment's done, once 
the lane has been pushed or whatever, they'll go back, they'll morph all the way back to agility and then come back with 50% strength, but way more damage. So that's a lot of little things that you can do. I won't go into all the other little things, but those are the main things you need to think about when using morph. And it's very high skill because when to do it, how to do it, how to not feed while doing it, all the kind of stuff. When you jump into a fight, when do you morph strength? When do you morph agility? You know, all that is very, very hard, and it's kind of just intuitive. You have to just learn over many, many repetitions, like hundreds of games with this hero, to really get very good at it. Because, again, you don't want to morph all to strength, you have no damage, all you're doing is stunning them, you know, that kind of stuff. It's very difficult to play this hero and know how to do all that stuff. So, that's Morph in a nutshell. Those are all of his abilities and kind of a little bit of tricks and tips of how to play him and the concepts. And now we can jump into a game and see how he's played. So now we're jumping into a replay here of Nightfall, playing Morphling. And just the first thing I wanted to note is that he has a lot of stats here. That's kind of what you want to be doing on this hero is stats are very important. They're like the number one thing. Um, you probably want some lifesteal at some point, but really stats are the biggest thing, in, especially in the early game. But then throughout the entire game, like pretty much every single item he's buying is a stat item. Something that gives him agility or agility and strength or a lot of strength and a lot of damage because that's pretty much what this hero does. Like he doesn't really do utility. He just does right click, jump in, you know. His utility always comes from his ability to morph to other heroes. So if he needs stuns, he can morph to um, enemy players that have stuns and that kind of thing. Uh, that's basically the main thing I want to be showing you or telling you here with the build. Also, you can see that early on, he is able to do a good amount of damage with his uh, adaptive strike. You can also see he sits at 340 HP. That's an important thing as well. Um, he's also... Like, as you kind of saw there, he's shifting back and forth. He, like, as he's taking harass there from the enemy, it might seem like, oh, he's almost going to die. But really, he's not even close to dead because he can shift up. Like, he was sitting at 300 HP. He's, like, almost max agility. He can always be shifting more and more to strength. And so you will see him if you watch this whole replay. Or if you go to any high MMR pro morph player replay, they will constantly be doing this. They're kind of, like, baiting the enemy. Um, now, obviously, the other... Players in this game understand how Morph works. They're not really going to be super baited into this, but a lot of people at lower MMRs will get baited. They'll, like, over-trade. Like, they'll try to trade too much. They'll use a lot of HP, and it won't really amount to much because Morph can just, again, regen back up. He can just shift right back up. And so that's honestly the basics of the lane. Like, there's really nothing else to say in terms of how to lane this hero other than just um, uh, getting your last hits like a normal carry does and uh, just trying to play safe. Now, you don't want to get, like, all in or anything like that, especially because early on he doesn't pick waveform. Um, he just has these two abilities here, which is very important. But if you don't have waveform and you're against something like maybe a Veno or something like that, you need to be very, very careful. Uh, and, you know, you might even want to go waveform second skill, but he knows he can be pretty aggressive against this lineup, so that's why he does adapt to strike. So another thing is, you know, you can vary the buildup as well. It's a very high skill hero kind of thing. Uh, you can also use Adaptive Strike and Waveform to secure CS. Like, he tried there with the range creep, didn't really work out. But that's pretty much the laning stage with Morph. Like, there's really not that much else to talk about. You kind of just want to be able to trade by baiting people with this. Use your Adaptive Strike because it's relatively low mana, kind of like off cooldown if you can. Not necessarily off cooldown, but to secure CS to harass the enemy, and then your Waveform is pretty much your, like, uh, go in, I'm going to secure a kill, or get out because they're harassing me kind of ability. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple uh, in the lane. It just... The concept is simple, but it may take high skill if you know to be very, very good and efficient at it. Now, I just wanted to show you this brief moment. This is the laning stage still. He's still only level 4. But just because, you know, you have low HP doesn't mean you can't get aggressive. So, he kind of waveforms in there to secure all that CS. Um, that's the main reason he's doing this. But he knows he can get pretty aggressive here, and he doesn't really care about wasting his waveform because he has a bunch of stick charges. And he's still only at 400... Uh, HP total. So, like, right here, he only has, like, 900 HP, and he's really, really low, but he's actually not that low. Like, he just kind of baited them in there, you saw, and he morphed all the way up to, like, 1100. Now he's morphing all the way back down to 340. Um, and then he's kind of sitting there. He could pop the stick if he wants. Yep, like that. He puts the Wraithman down, he pops the wand, and now he's, like, ba basically back up to full. And the thing is, this these abilities here, like, keep the percentage, so that's what you're seeing. It, like, kind of sits at the same percentage, just your total HP pool goes up. Um, same thing with mana. Now, mana, obviously, you do spend it to morph and all that kind of stuff, but it's a similar kind of concept. Um, that's why people, like, drop different kind of... Uh, that's why you see people, like, drop their items sometimes when they have, like, a mana boots or when they have a uh, salve going and things like that. It's the same kind of concept for Morphling. So now I fast-forwarded a little bit, and you can see he's having a pretty good game. He has, like, 10k net worth at 16, 17 minutes. 
And although this hero is like a farming hero, he's a very good late game carry, you don't just want to sit back and farm. It's also kind of the way the patch works with the new map and everything, but you can definitely be aggressive because it's very hard to kill you early on, like until you have a lot of lockdown. Um, you also do a lot of damage early with just a few items. So you can see he kind of wants to be aggressive here. He wants to play in this forward-facing area, farming the enemy ancients and that kind of stuff. And so they do go on this, uh, this ember here and they end up killing him. That's the thing, because you can morph into people, you can actually, like, use their stuns against them before they have BKB. But the problem is Enigma comes in, black holes him, um, they also have the, uh, the Keeper of the Light there with the blast. And so this is what I wanted to show you, is the feeding, actually, and the fact that he died. Now he has a really good game, I think he only other dies maybe one other time this entire game. But really the thing to say is, if you get caught off guard, where you get stunned without pressing your strength shift first, you can die very, very easily. Because you see, he died with 870 HP. And this happens even to the best players when they get surprised. So that is honestly the main thing you need to learn with the hero. The main thing you need to get good at is understanding, you know, what can kill you and when you need to, like, preemptively hit strength morph. Now, I think he, if he, like, maybe was paying attention or being a little bit safer there, he probably would have, like, preemptively clicked strength morph to make sure that, like, even if a stun came in, um he wouldn't have died, but let's just check Enigma. I think Enigma has to blink, and he blinked in. Yeah, I think Enigma blinked in, so he wasn't necessarily ready for that, but it's also very... It's like one of the few times in Dota that reaction time really, really is important, because if you see a split second that, you know, they're blinking in and they're going to stun you, pressing that strength uh, attribute shift is really, really important, because you're going to be able to survive. Like, if he clicked just this button uh, before that black hole came off, he probably would have survived there. So that's the difference. You need to really be aware of everything in the game. It's, that's why this hero is such high skill, because you need to know every single enemy spell, you know, whether that spell is really going to threaten you at what point in the game and why, and then, you know, when you have to press the strength morph and how much you have to do that, because that's another thing. If you're stunned for a long time and you're just, like, attribute shifting strength fully, you need to realize that you're not going to be able to go back and turn back into the fight, uh, because now you're just, like, 20% HP, you have full strength morph, and you're not going to be able to participate, so you need to, like, get out, maybe regen up, that kind of stuff, so it's it's a lot of fine-tuning, understanding what's going on in the game, and really, like, knowing how to push your limits with the hero. So I just wanted to show you that, that even really, really good players that know what they're doing can still feed if they get caught off guard. So um, that's, like, the main thing with, with this hero, is just understanding how to not get caught off guard, or get caught off guard as little as possible. So anyway, that's a long way of saying that this hero is hard. <laughs> So now we skipped ahead. They have Aegis. They're running pretty heavily, but his team actually isn't doing that well. Um, you see the net worth's there. The Wind Ranger's actually ahead of him. So it's not like this game is a free game by any means. But this hero is all, all about, like I said, understanding your limits, when to go in, what kills you. Obviously, he has Aegis so he can be uh, a little bit more aggressive. But now that he has Ags, that's the important thing. That's kind of what I wanted to show you, this team fight, but also um, what to do when you have Ags. Because you're pretty much going to buy Ags every single game. But you have to understand, like, why you're buying it. You don't just buy it because, okay, well, I just buy it because that's what I do. You need to understand who you use it on and why. So this game, the obvious one, is going to be Wind Ranger. So really, he's just kind of waiting for Wind Ranger to show. Because as soon as Wind Ranger shows, he's going to steal Wind Ranger. So right here, he immediately morphs into Wind Ranger. Um, and it's really good because Wind Ranger obviously has a stun. And Wind Ranger is a universal hero, so it's very, very good overall for damage and for stealing stats and all that kind of stuff. So you can see he takes Wind Ranger. Now the thing is, Wind Ranger, if we click on Wind Ranger, Wind Ranger does have Lincolns. But keep in mind, this hero also has two abilities that pop Lincolns. So that's the main consideration that you want to understand. You can see also here, he knew a stun was coming, so he got off Strength Morph. And now he's able to try to run away, get out. He still has uh, Wind Ranger as his morph. So he's able to try to win, run away. And this is why this hero is super survivable, super hard to kill. Because, you know, through all that, his team died. It was like a 2v, you know, whatever. It was like a 2v5 in there, and he still was able to not even lose the Aegis. So it's just like a good example of knowing the hero's limits and understanding how to play the hero. Now he's going back in, again, 2v5. Uh, obviously, he does have Aegis. But look at that. Like, it's very, very hard to kill him. They end up doing so, but they two died in the process, and now they know they need to get out. So, in any case, that's just like a good example of how to fight with Morphling, how to understand your limits, how to know, you know, the consideration of who to use Ags on, all that kind of stuff, and then playing the team fight within your limits. Like, I'm not the best Morphling player. So, with everything that's going on here, I can't tell you specifically exactly, like, what he was thinking to be like, okay, well, I mean, other than the fact that he had Aegis, obviously, 
But understanding, like, okay, I'm not gonna die twice. I can push my limits. I can go back in. Like, why he went back in there, like, you know, 1v5 or, like, 2v5. All that kind of stuff. This is something that you're really only gonna know from playing Morphling a lot. Like, that's just the bottom line. This hero is all about feel. It's all about understanding what kills you and what you can get away with. And that is really just, like, the number one thing. Everything else is straightforward. You know, you have a waveform, mobility spell. You have these damage spells. You shift, and then you turn into the enemy. Once you understand which enemy to turn into and why, I mean, really, there's not... Like, me just telling you what to do in terms of, like, the concepts, it's not that complicated. But it just gets down to, in each individual moment, against every single matchup, uh, knowing how to push your limits, like I've said multiple times. And that's really everything that the hero is. That's the definition of why this hero is so hard to play. And so, honestly, there's not really much else to say. You can see they're winning here. Uh, they're really not up that much gold, but Morphling is just honestly such a strong hero right now. But just in general, it's so hard to deal with him. so hard to take him down. It's just so difficult. He doesn't even have Aegis anymore, but... This is also a game where not much stops him. I mean, there's Black Hole and there's, like, Shackle, and that's, like, it. That really is going to not allow him to morph. And so in this kind of game, it's like a free game if you're really good at the hero. So anyway, that's my Morphling Guide. I hope that helps you understand how to play the hero and what really is strong about the hero and what the hero does in general. Like I said, you're just going to have to kind of learn for yourself. I can't give you every specific situation, and that's one of those things. Is The, the easier heroes in Dota, it's very easy to tell you what specifically to do in the very limited amount of situations that the hero can uh, see. But Morphling is just one of those heroes that there's so many combinations of things that will kill you and that you need to be scared of that it's impossible to really give you every little bit of advice. It only, I can only say general stuff, and then you just kind of have to learn for yourself. So that is my Morphling guide. As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.